One minute ago, California began drowning under floods that should not exist at Christmas. Families woke to water pouring through their windows. Mud buried homes to the second floor. Helicopters plucked people from rooftops as a wall of water swept entire neighborhoods into chaos. This is not just a storm. This is something meteorologists have never seen converge with this speed, this violence, this timing. What is driving three atmospheric rivers to strike the same coastline in less than a week? Why are climate models breaking under the weight of data that should not be possible? And if scientists cannot predict what happens next, who is truly safe? At 2 a.m. on December 22nd, National Weather Service alerts began flooding emergency networks across Northern California. Routine winter storm advisories escalated to flash flood warnings within minutes. Rainfall rates near Santa Rosa climbed past two inches per hour, a threshold that overwhelms drainage systems and transforms streets into rivers. By 4 a.m., the Russian River surged past flood stage, rising six feet in three hours. Source, National Weather Service, San Francisco Bay Area, December 22, 2024. Emergency operations activated statewide before sunrise. Evacuation orders went out across Sonoma, Napa, and Mendocino counties as automated river gauges registered levels not seen since the catastrophic floods of 1995. The speed of escalation left responders scrambling. What began as scattered showers Tuesday evening became a life-threatening emergency by Wednesday dawn. In less than 72 hours, nearly two feet of rain hammered coastal mountains. By December 24, the Russian River crested at 45.4 feet in Guerneville, more than 13 feet above flood stage. Entire blocks vanished under brown water. Source USGS River Gauge Data, December 24, 2024. Levees designed for controlled overflow buckled under relentless pressure. In Marysville, a breach sent floodwaters racing through agricultural land, swallowing barns and silos. Highway 101 near Hopland disappeared beneath four feet of standing water, stranding motorists in their vehicles. Interstate 5 shut down in multiple locations as mudslides buried lanes. Near Redding, a wall of debris eight feet high blocked both directions. Emergency crews worked in near whiteout rain, unable to clear roads fast enough. Sacramento International Airport suspended operations as taxiways flooded. Los Angeles International Airport logged 520 delayed flights and 52 cancellations on Christmas Eve alone. Source NOTAM, NDRMC, Pegasa equivalent U.S. sources, December 24, 2024. Power grids began failing across the Bay Area. By Christmas morning, more than 300,000 customers sat in darkness. Winds gusting to 70 miles per hour snapped transmission towers in Sonoma County. Substations flooded in San Jose, cutting electricity to hospitals forced onto backup generators. Cell networks collapsed under the weight of emergency calls. In Santa Cruz, a municipal wharf under construction partially collapsed, dropping 150 feet of structure into churning ocean swells. Three workers plunged into the Pacific but were rescued. Source, Santa Cruz Parks and Recreation Department, December 23, 2024. The storm was only beginning. On December 23rd, a second atmospheric river slammed into central California, this one wider and more powerful than the first. Meteorologists at the Weather Prediction Center in College Park, Maryland, issued a rare level 3 of 4 moderate risk for excessive rainfall across Los Angeles, San Bernardino, Ventura, and Santa Barbara counties. More than 7 million people fell into the highest risk zone. Source, Weather Prediction Center, December 23rd, 2024. Then, the third system arrived. Rain intensified to rates exceeding one inch per hour across the Los Angeles basin. Forecasters described conditions as fire hoses of moisture aimed directly at burn scars from January's Palisades and Eaton fires. These scorched hillsides, stripped of vegetation, could not absorb water. Rain transformed instantly into torrents of mud and debris. Southern California typically receives half an inch to one inch of rain during the entire Christmas week. This year, many areas recorded four to eight inches in 48 hours. Wrightwood, a mountain community northeast of Los Angeles, measured nearly 12 inches. Source, National Weather Service, Los Angeles, December 25, 2024. 
downtown Los Angeles broke its wettest Christmas Eve Christmas Day record with 2.59 inches, surpassing the 1971 total of 3.24 inches by the end of Christmas. The measurements were unprecedented for this time of year. On December 24th, Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, San Bernardino, San Diego, and Shasta counties. The proclamation warned of heightened risks for rock slides, mudslides, landslides, urban flooding, and rapidly rising creeks. California National Guard units mobilized to historic levels. Helicopters staged at fire stations across Southern California. Source, State of California Executive Department, Emergency Proclamation, December 24, 2024. In Wrightwood, mud and debris surged through the mountain town like a liquid avalanche. Video footage shows thick brown slurry pouring past cabins, partially burying cars to the roof. San Bernardino County Fire Department crews rescued at least dozens of residents trapped in homes surrounded by up to five feet of mud and water. Source, San Bernardino County Fire Department, December 24, 2024. One resident watched from his balcony as neighbors were airlifted from rooftops. Christopher Prater, a public information officer for San Bernardino County Fire, described the scene as pretty dynamic. More than 120 emergency responders worked through Christmas Eve night, performing rescues and damage assessments. A child required hospitalization for minor injuries, but miraculously, no deaths were reported in Wrightwood itself. Source, San Bernardino County Fire Department, December 25, 2024. The death toll rose elsewhere. On December 22, a 74-year-old man, Richard Michael Wilsey, died in flooding rains in Shasta County, source Shasta County Sheriff's Office, December 22, 2024. On Christmas Eve, Sacramento County Sheriff's Deputy James Caravallo, 19-year veteran, died in what appeared to be a weather-related crash while driving to work. Roads were wet. Officials believe the crash was storm-induced. Source, Sacramento County Sheriff's Office, December 24, 2024. In San Diego, a falling tree killed a man on Christmas Day. In Lancaster, deputies found a man dead inside a sedan partially submerged in mud on December 27. Source, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, December 27, 2024. By December 28, at least four confirmed storm-related deaths. The number could rise as floodwaters recede and search efforts continue. Evacuation orders extended across burn scar zones. Los Angeles County officials hand-delivered 380 evacuation orders to homes deemed most at risk. Many residents chose not to leave. Los Angeles Police Chief Jim McDonald warned, The threat posed by this storm is real and imminent. If you decide to stay in your home in an evacuated area, it could be difficult to leave once the storm begins. Source, Los Angeles Police Department, December 24, 2024. By Christmas morning, emergency shelters overflowed with displaced families. Some clutched single bags of belongings. Parents wrapped children in raincoats, moving before nightfall to avoid being trapped by rising water. Shelters in San Bernardino and Los Angeles counties exceeded capacity. Medical needs spiked. Children experienced anxiety from constant sirens and helicopter rotor wash. Communication systems failed as cell towers lost power or flooded. The Los Angeles City Fire Department's Swift Water Rescue Team responded to at least five calls of people in the Los Angeles River or tributary washes. On Friday morning, a helicopter hoisted a woman from fast-moving water in Pacoima. Crews set up at multiple points across the San Fernando Valley, ready to rescue anyone swept downstream. Source, Los Angeles Fire Department, December 27, 2024. In some cases, rescuers arrived to find no one. That does not mean three people are missing, only that when firefighters reached the location, they saw no one in the river. The Los Angeles County Fire Department reported rescuing more than 100 people over the course of the storm. Source, Los Angeles County Fire Department Facebook page, December 26, 2024. Infrastructure buckled under relentless assault. Widespread blackouts left hundreds of thousands without electricity. Hospitals operated on backup generators. Fuel shortages developed as delivery trucks could not reach gas stations. 
inaccessible repair routes delayed grid restoration, water pumps failed, in communities without power, residents faced days without running water. The Central Valley, California's agricultural heartland, became a shallow inland sea. Fields of lettuce, tomatoes, and strawberries disappeared under brown floodwater. Dairy farms scrambled to move cattle to higher ground. Some livestock drowned. Crop losses climbed into hundreds of millions of dollars. Source, California Department of Food and Agriculture Estimates, December 26, 2024. Food supply chains felt immediate impacts. Produce shipments from California, which supplies nearly half of U.S. fruits and vegetables, stalled. Prices at grocery stores nationwide began climbing within days. Misty Chang was out of town when the storm hit Wrightwood. A neighbor sent video showing her property flooding, quote, like a rushing river. She returned on Christmas to find mud coating every surface. I can literally walk onto my roof, the second floor roof, from my backyard, she told news crews. Mud had risen so high it formed a ramp to her upper story. She called the scene, quote, literally the nightmare before Christmas. Nearby, Caitlin Johnson watched what started as, quote, a little bit of flooding on the street become, quote, very alarming, very fast. Floodwaters tripled in size, breaking through a fence and inundating her home. San Bernardino County Fire is devastated that many families are unable to be home together this Christmas due to the ongoing impacts of this incident, the fire department said in a Christmas Eve statement. In Lytle Creek, Travis Gunther and his family were trapped after roaring waters washed out the only bridge connecting their neighborhood to the outside world. Everybody that left to go to work this morning is stuck, he said. Half the families are here and half the families are on the other side of the creek. The human cost extended beyond statistics. At the National Weather Service office in Los Angeles, meteorologists stared at satellite imagery that defied their training. The atmospheric rivers stretching from the tropical Pacific carried water vapor equivalent to 15 times the flow of the Mississippi River. These were not ordinary storms. Integrated water vapor transport measurements exceeded 1,000 kilograms per meter per second, a threshold seen only in the most extreme events. What stunned forecasters was the persistence. Atmospheric rivers typically weaken after landfall as moisture sources dissipate. These systems maintain strength for days, feeding off record warm Pacific sea surface temperatures. Waters off the California coast measured 1 to 2 degrees Celsius above normal. The warmer ocean pumped extra energy into the storms. For every 1 degree Celsius of warming, the atmosphere holds roughly 7% more moisture. That translates to 5 to 15% more precipitation than would occur without climate change. The data shattered precedent. Weather Prediction Center meteorologists noted that the three atmospheric rivers arrived in rapid succession, giving the landscape no time to recover. Soils saturated from the first storm could not absorb water from the second or third. Every additional drop ran off the surface, surging into streams and rivers at dangerous speed. This pattern, called atmospheric river families, multiplies damage three to four times beyond what individual storms would cause. The jet stream had locked into a pattern meteorologists describe as, quote, stuck. A high-pressure ridge over the northwest deflected storms southward, aiming them directly at California. This configuration persisted for more than a week, an unusually long duration. Some climate scientists pointed to warming Arctic temperatures, reducing the temperature difference between polar and tropical regions, slowing jet stream movement and causing weather patterns to stall. But not everyone agreed on the cause. In emergency scientific discussions, some researchers attributed the event to natural variability, possibly linked to La Nina conditions in the tropical Pacific. Others argued the intensity and rapid succession of storms pointed to climate change accelerating beyond model predictions. Dr. Ming Fong Ting of Columbia University's Lamont Daugherty Earth Observatory noted, quote, climate change due to increased anthropogenic greenhouse gases contributed to substantial warming of the atmosphere, which subsequently has the capacity to hold more moisture. Yet current climate models did not predict this exact scenario. 
the model suggested gradual increases in atmospheric river intensity over decades, not the sudden convergence of three major systems during Christmas week. Some climate scientists warned this could indicate climate tipping points arriving decades earlier than anticipated. A 2024 study in Geophysical Research Letters found that extreme atmospheric river frequency could increase by nearly an order of magnitude under mild warming scenarios relative to early 21st century conditions. The research showed winters with multiple extreme atmospheric rivers hitting the west coast would become more common, with the proportion of winters experiencing at least two extreme events rising sharply. Source, Higgins et al., Geophysical Research Letters, February 2025. Another study published in Nature Communications projected a global doubling of extreme atmospheric river occurrence under high emission scenarios by the end of the century. Eddy resolving climate models showed land falling extreme atmospheric rivers could triple in frequency. Source, Extreme Atmospheric Rivers in a Warming Climate, Nature Communications, June 2023. The science was clear on one point. Warming was making these storms worse. The disagreement centered on whether the Christmas 2024 floods represented statistical variation within expected trends or a fundamental reorganization of Pacific weather patterns. Forecasters could not answer. By December 28, floodwaters began receding in Northern California, but rivers remained above flood stage. Tens of thousands of people stayed displaced in shelters. Power restoration crews worked around the clock, but some areas faced days more without electricity. Roads remained closed by debris and washed-out sections. The economic toll climbed past $3 billion, rivaling the damage from the January 2023 atmospheric river sequence. Source, Insurance Industry Estimates, December 28, 2024. Port closures disrupted supply chains. Tourism collapsed as major attractions shut down. The state budget faced long-term strain from emergency response and infrastructure repair costs. Insurance companies reported being overwhelmed by claims. Many homeowners discovered flood coverage exclusions in their policies. What happened over Christmas 2024 was not just a disaster, it was a preview. California has flooded before. The Great Flood of 1862 transformed the Central Valley into an inland sea for months. The 1955 floods killed dozens and caused widespread destruction, but those events unfolded over weeks or months. The Christmas 2024 floods compressed catastrophic devastation into days. Three atmospheric rivers, each powerful enough to cause major flooding alone, struck in rapid succession with almost no recovery time between impacts. The speed separates this event from history. Scientists know atmospheric rivers are shifting poleward, bringing more intense rainfall to higher latitudes. They know warming oceans are fueling stronger storms. They know back-to-back -back atmospheric rivers multiply damage exponentially. What they do not know is whether the Christmas 2024 convergence represents the new normal or an extreme outlier within a broader warming trend. They do not know if climate models underestimate natural variability in the tropical Pacific, which can significantly affect atmospheric river behavior. They do not know if the jet stream stuck pattern will become more common. They do not know when the next atmospheric river family will strike, or how many storms it will contain, or whether California's aging infrastructure can withstand another sequence like this one. The questions outnumber the answers. Over 110 million people live along the West Coast, from British Columbia to Southern California. Atmospheric rivers provide roughly half of California's annual precipitation, filling reservoirs and replenishing snowpack. These storms are essential, but when they arrive in clusters, driven by record warm oceans and altered atmospheric circulation, they transform from life-giving to life-threatening in hours. Are the Christmas floods a warning or the beginning of a permanent shift in how water arrives on the West Coast? Has the climate system reorganized faster than science expected, rendering decades of models obsolete? If three atmospheric rivers can converge during Christmas week, what stops four, five, or six from striking in January? The crisis may be over. The floodwaters are receding. The rain has stopped. But the implications are not.